agus ar ríshe glaithe canis na bléan an éadag a seasca ho. Mar a chéile bíon sgéal, sa glaithe leach canis seo, sa bléan éadag an óca héan an búa ríshe gan dú. Dag son, gref glaithe canis nav gnóha gugin, an bí agus bóid an phob in leo, in aig an dúin, fóid na náach casagar a chéile ríb hanna glaithe canis, agus an dúin i glaithe canis na héan dan gáhar o úir, agus níodh hepri bóid a siúd i glaithe canis na héan. So the team picture down then, posing for their photograph, a photograph that in years to come may well be alongside the treasured mementos of 1960, 61, and of course 68 as well. For the first time in 23 years, down her back, led by Paddy O'Rourke from Burren, with the noisy cheers of down fans up there on Hill 16 ringing in their ears. Can they maintain their 100% record in the final? Rated, of course, as outsiders by the bookies, but they've overcome Armagh, Kerry, Donegal and Kerry to get this far. And this guy with the national flag and with the down flag has got the best possible position in a precarious place up there on the top of the Nally stand, just to the right of the people here on Hill 16. A perfect setting, a glorious afternoon. And everything in readiness now for the arrival of the Meath team. They'll be out very shortly. Well, Jack O'Shea, it looks to me as though down are here in a majority. Yeah, Joe, very impressed with uh, down coming out to the field. The players actually were calling out to the, the down supporters to give them every support. And that's going to be a very, very interesting game, uh, one I'm really looking forward to, and I'm sure that everybody around the country will really as well. Meads Jerry McEntee comes out as part of the Meads team, which is led out by Liam Hayes from Screen. The final leg of an exhausting but nerve-tingling odyssey, the tenth game, the longest route possible to claim the Sam Maguire. And here on the Canal Inn, the Meads fans have taken up station. June the 2nd seems a long time ago, then it was Dublin followed by Dublin, then Dublin once more, and in June, July, it was still, it was still Dublin. But Wicklow, Offaly, Leach and Roscommon have all fallen by the wayside against one of the game's most resilient powers. Kevin Foley there taking up his position on the right-hand side of the bench in front. Bernard Flint in alongside, and as always, the team captain, Liam Hayes, stands at the back of the team photograph. He never goes down into the centre, the customary position for the team captain. Let's take a check then on the team news. Down selectors are in the happy position of having a clean bill of health, so they nominate the same team as that which started against Kerry. Eamon Burns replaced in that match by Liam Austin is once again in midfield alongside Barry Breen, while in attack, full forward Peter Whitnell has recovered from the foot injury incurred at work and takes his usual place alongside Mickey Linden and James McCartan. Down with some formidable players in reserve. Liam Austin, we've already mentioned, and Ambrose Rogers as well, probably first choice for midfield and the forwards, respectively, the two of them. Now the Meath team. And their team news shows the enforced change with the Colm O'Rourke forced to sit out the start of the match because of a virus. So Jerry McEntee makes a 48th championship appearance. He comes into midfield with PJ Gillick moving into the forwards. But whether that's, as you see there, at corner forward, or whether he'd move out onto the 40, as I might expect, well, we'll just have to wait and see. But Jack O'Shea, the loss of Colm O'Rourke, it's a very considerable loss. He's been such a major influence in all matches. Yes, Jerry, I think uh, Colm O'Rourke is going to be a fierce loss to me. But sometimes uh, a loss of a player of his stature can be a great inspiration to the other players. And I know that when we won the four in the Royal Islands, back in uh, early 70s, early 80s, that we were missing one of our top forwards in each game. And I think this gave us the score early on. I think once you lose the player to the air so before, and it prepares everybody, and I think nobody's really taken by surprise. I think it would have been a bigger shock if he had to cry off in the dressing room. So uh, at some stage in the game, though, I think Mead might pull this man out of the... Out of the I, I certainly expect to see him, and then he would be making his 51st championship appearance. That would be equaling the record of Peter McDermott in Meath. So Seamus Pryor just checking with the umpires and linesmen that everybody is in position. The 104th All-Ireland Football Final is underway, and it is straight away. Barry Breen going back for down, who played from right to left in the first half. Switching it in, James McCartan getting onto it fast. And to send the ball inside towards Greg Blaney. Mick Lyons making the first clearance. Out to Jerry McIntyre, who takes up a good position. Terry Ferguson, well away from his left corner back position. The marking arrangements for me at the back will be interesting as Beggy plays it across towards Coyle. He went to stretch out for that one. Stafford up towards Bernard Flynn. 
Meath coming looking the first for the first point. They've won the first free kick. Damon Burns, the one who commits the foul. And David Beggy and Co. have the chance here to go in front. At the back, it's Brendan Riley who's marking James McCartan. It was Kevin Foley last year in the league final. Terry Ferguson is across left corner back. He's on Mickey Linden. So it's as they were selected. Brian Stafford has scored nine points in the semi-final. That's the first of the afternoon. Always looks most relaxed. And absolutely deadly from Freeze. Jerry McEntee. He's fouled, bottled up there once again by Eamon Burns. In towards Liam Hayes. Burns trying to get back. Bernard Flynn against Brendan McKernan. Still Flynn coming looking for the second point. And again, after it. That's a very good start by Meath, imposing their will upon the down backs who are being very slow to settle. It, that all came there from Johnny McAtee winning the ball in the middle of the field. Uh, the down player was penalised, the ball was brought forward. He took a quick free to Bernard Flynn, who shook off some very good tackles and kicked a very good point for me. A very good start for me so far in this game. Down winning themselves the free in midfield. Up it goes into the corner towards James McCarthy, who's made a quick switch across there. Brendan Riley went across, and the referee just uh, warning him about the tackle. Free is going to be taken by Ross Carr. Down started the Ulster campaign virtually without a free taker. And they nominated Ross Carr, and he really has been a revelation. So will this be the opening score for the Ulster champions? Falls short to Mickey McQuillan. It's Harnan against Blaney. Line ball will be kicked in by Gary Mason. Well, a huge one from Gary Mason, but tailing well to the left. Normally a terrifically assured free kick taker. There used to be a penalty competition up and down for youngsters up to minor level, and he won that competition every year. Absolutely deadly from penalties, but uh, he would be unlikely to take a penalty this afternoon. That would probably be uh, Mickey Linden's responsibility. Oh, he did miss one in the semi-final. Mickey McQuillan's kick right into the middle. Mopped up here well by Paddy O'Rourke, the team captain. Across towards James McCarthy, who once again has switched back in there. Trying to make his presence felt. to takes a high challenge from Brendan Riley. The referee is speaking, I think, for the wrong player. It's Brendan Riley was the player who put in the challenge that time, and the foul... The referee had a very quick word with Liam Harnan. Yeah, James McCartan here is causing a lot of problems for the, the main fullback side. Liam Harnan, very high tackle there, and very good looking at him to get away without a booking on that occasion. The referee was absolutely spot on, it was Liam Harnan. So it's knocked over by Gary Mason, and Down got their first point in this All-Ireland final. McQuillan here never looks fussy when making a save, always very secure and uh, never unduly spectacular. This young Down fan, I think, will remember his day out at Croke Park. Oh, a huge leap in the air by Ross Carr, taking it with some difficulty against Martin O'Connell. He's given it away to Jerry McEntee. Blocked down by Greg Blaney, taken now by Liam Harnan. Fed forward towards Bernard Flynn, who's taken up a robot commission early on. Harnan once again stepping into the breach, another foul. Me 
needs the third free kick. Got deep for PJ Gilly, but it's fetched in there splendidly somehow by the fullback Connor Deegan. Has the presence of mind to link up with his goalkeeper Neil Collins. He's given it away to Liam Hayes coming racing through the centre. In towards David Beggy on the edge of the small square, fed back towards Brian Stafford. There's a man loose, that was Bernard Flynn, but he couldn't get it to him, and instead he's put it wide. Meads first wide of the match, down with one wide as well, that from the free kick by Gary Mason earlier on. Well, there was a real goal chance on there, Jack. Yeah, Ger, uh, a bit of a mix-up there in the, in the down defence, but it was still good down uh, defensive play once uh, David Beggy missed. He had a good chance here to take the shot at goal, uh, maybe probably should have fisted the ball over the bar, but again, took the right option here, gave the ball back, back out to Brian Stafford. Paul Higgins, every, all the down defence closing him down well, and... Uh, Bad mystery by Brian there. It's going to be a free kick. Jerry McEntee made a fine catch, but the referee decided he was up on somebody's shoulder to gain an advantage. It's with Gary Mason of Down. Down trailing by a point, two points to one. Ross Carr trying to steal inside. Colin Coyle not prepared to yield an inch. Likewise, Martin O'Connell. Free quickly taken towards Mickey Linton. Missed it completely. Terry Ferguson has the chance to go back. Jerry McEntee taking up some very very interesting positions Mick Lyons punting this one out towards Tommy Dowd a fine secure catch against John Kelly and Kelly commits the foul referee perfectly positioned John Kelly who's the vice captain of this uh, down team made his debut in the league against Leash back in 1986 takes the free. Taken down nicely. Burns. Brendan Riley going out first time to get it and it's uh, James McCartan has got there. The referee says play on or does he? No, he's whistled back to play for the foul by Mick Lyons. The referee seemed to have allowed an advantage initially. has been around for quite a while made his debut back in 1976 in the championship against Kilkenny so here's a chance to tie up the match with eight minutes gone in the first half Gary Mason two points in the semi-final one already this afternoon Two points for me, two points for down. Well, having looked a little bit nervous earlier on in defence, they've now settled down completely down. jumping in midfield trying to fetch it there against Eamon Burns Kevin Foley and the referee with the whistle at sound giving the free to Meath Martin O'Connell dropped in Gillick touches it down to Stafford, and the old one-two, and Stafford gets his second point of the afternoon to restore Meade's advantage. Well, he always is waiting around there, waiting for the break of the ball, and that was touched down splendidly, and Stafford did the rest. Yeah, that was a great point by Brian Stafford, because he had pulled Conor Deegan before that free kick was pulled out to the right-hand side. Conor Deegan was caught out there, and Stafford was in under the breaking ball, a very good point for Meade. Pissed it down again, this time by Liam Hayes. DJ Kane waiting for it. Challenged by David Beggy. Well, aimlessly booted forward. And Peter Whitnell unable to contain the pass. Marty McCabe there standing in the middle of the substitutes out here at the front of the subs bench. It's all terribly easy to get a decent view of the match if you happen to be sitting down in on the second row of that subs bench. It's a great catch by Brendan McKernan. Mickey Linden unable to hold it. It's gone on decently for Whitnell. 
Whitnell against Liam Harnan. Referee says play on. Still Whitnell. A strong competitive player. And in the end, it's going to be a free out. Peter Whitnell looks like he's going to have quite a battle this afternoon against McLeans. Once the game settles down, Jack, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of service the inside forward line of Down in particular get. Yeah, George, there, uh, Conor Deegan, uh, that all stood for him, he gave a very poor ball. He won the ball well in the fence, but he booted the ball out over the side. Line. I think Down should be looking to get the ball in low to these forwards, because at the moment they have the legs, James McCartan especially. If they get the ball in low, they can work a few scores early on. Colin Coyle, shipping it up towards Tommy Dow, watched it all the way, that's a great catch. A lovely piece of fielding, fine skill as he runs through the centre of the down defence they try to get in a decent challenge it's Flynn and in the end it's brilliantly blocked down and Flynn is uh, fouled it seemed to be by Connor Deegan after he played that one away I'm not sure if the referee spotted it but the umpire in any case has run out to raise the right arm signalling that it's going to be a 45 Brian Stafford has come right out from full forward to take the 45 metres kick, the first in the match. Going towards the right. I think, Jared, if Colin O'Rourke had been around, you might have seen Brian dropping that ball into the square. Again, I think he was forced into taking the shot there. But I think that Leeds, at this stage, might be better to pull uh, uh, PJ Gillig out from the corner because the mid forwards of Bernard Flynn and Tommy Dowd have run into good positions, but uh, they seem to be blocked up when they get in. Jerry McIntyre trying to force that one forward. Likewise, Tommy Dowd. And the referee goes across and says he didn't like the nature of that pass forward by Tommy Dowd. He saw it as a foul. So a free kick for down, and it's going to be Paul Higgins who'll come across to take it. A player who grabs really hard and limits his opponent's openings. Brendan Riley under this one. But put under pressure as McLeans was coming across as well. And a stage McCartan who feeds it inside. McCullen comes out to make the save there with Mickey Linden breathing down his neck. Jerry McEntee once again back around the full back position to take the loose ball out all a bit frantic and frenetic David Beggy the sideline kicker Paul Higgins watching it Mickey Linden coming out for this one secure catch and then he takes a high one to the face from Kevin Foley I think Gary Mason plays it down Greg Blaney coming in gets by the hard challenge the referee whistles and signals that it's going to be a free but all this while Mickey Linden is down injured having made a good secure catch I think he got an elbow in the face there was the telecom era man of the match and I think they're very concerned about it he made a really good catch that time and then I think the elbow of one of the Meath backs, if I had to say who it was, I think it might have been Kevin Foley. Yes, sir, I think Kevin Foley was the one. I think Mickey had won the ball, and Kevin Foley going by him seemed to hit him into the face. And uh, Mickey seems to be in a bit of trouble here, and uh, what a pity it would be if, uh, if there was anything seriously wrong with him. Yeah, here we see the incident. Uh well, I think that was what happened afterwards. Thankfully, Mickey Linden's back on his feet once again. Pete McGrath. The team doctor, John Griffin, going in there just to make sure that Mickey's OK. Looks a bit dazed still. Paddy O'Rourke, the team captain, having a word with him. Yeah, here we see uh, Mickey Linden getting the ball, but here we see Kevin Ball, oh, very high tackle there. A uh, few of the mid players have got away with a few high tackles so far, and lucky to get away with those. So it's going to be a free kick, and Gary Mason has the chance to level up the match. He's Down's only scorer so far. It 
points, three points each. Just over 15 minutes gone in the first half. Judged over there. Paddy O'Rourke back to John Kelly. Eamon Burns dropping it in. Peter Whitnell trying to get onto it. Liam Harnan instead for Meath. Up to Liam Hayes. Fisted away splendidly by Eamon Burns. Reaches Jerry McEntee. Brendan Riley now trying to take it round Gary Mason. Challenged by Ross Carr. Or by Barry Breen, I should say. So Meath will be taking the free from uh, just inside the near sideline. Jerry McIntyre, I think, wanting a bit of movement off the ball. Gillick sees that one fisted away by Paul Higgins. It comes down to Colin Coyle. Hit it first time. Not great length, but very high. Paddy O'Rourke again under trouble. Martin O'Connell now coming, raiding for Meath. Across to Tommy Dowd. They try to close him down, but he still gets in his kick very truly, but it's stopped by Neil Collins on the line. Shades of a great save he made in one of the Ulster matches when uh, Down were very near to being eliminated. I think it was against Derry. And he made a great save when the ball seemed to be going over the bar, and Down came downfield and got a point. Green. Up towards Whitnell, it's stopped by Mick Lyons. Striving to impose his will on this game, Mick Lyons, doing well so far against Peter Whitnell, who hasn't got very much latitude. David Beggy. Green, the one who's coming in to make a challenge. Cross towards Brian Stafford. Outmarked, however, and it's Burns that chips it away towards Gary Mason. Kevin Foley there too for Mead. Now Tommy Dowd, looking up, spotted that... Uh, the corner forward, Bernard Flynn had made a run across. A good passage of play by Mead. Liam Hayes kicking very truly, and the team captain has put it over the bar, and Mead go back in front again. Hayes' first point of the game. Well, they really exposed great gaps that time, Jack. Yeah, um, that, uh, there was some very bad defensive play there by Down. They were finding it very, very difficult to get the ball out the field. But very good play on Meade's behalf. Tommy Dowd switched the ball one wing to the other to Bernard Flynn, and he gave the ball into Liam Hayes, who sidestepped his marker and kicked a very good point for me. It's Burns breaking free again for Down. And every time Meade have gone in front, Down have been able to come back and get a levelling up score. But the referee has a word with Liam Hayes. So Ross Carr. Deep intake of breath. Just outside the 45 meter line. It's good. It's very good. It's gone over the bar. Ross Carr's first point. And as before, the sides are level. few really Ross Carr to convert successfully from the backs up to the forwards hit nine points against Derry in the replayed Ulster semi-final today playing in his 17th championship match Gary Mason waiting for the break of the ball and very suitably it came his way Peter Whitnell again there. Liam Hayes trying to get it loose. Now Ross Carr, pursued by Martin O'Connell and Colin Coyle. O'Rourke inside to Greg Blaney. Nicely fed forward to Eamon Burns. And down go in front for the first time in the match. They were behind by two points initially, came back, and then they've swapped points with me ever since. But this is the first time they've gone in front. And Mick Lyons is down with an injury that's going to require attention. 
Dr. Jack Finn, the team's medical officer, coming in to give attention to Big Lions. Yeah, that was a great score for Down. Uh, here we see Paddy O'Rourke picking the ball up, taking his time and picking out his man. Greg Blaney here, see how, how experienced told here, held the ball up beautifully for Eamon Burns coming through, and a very, very good score. So Mick Lyons in the wars, in need of attention. We were talking about Peter Whitnell, Jack, before the uh, start of this match, and how central he might be to the outcome of uh, the game. But uh, Greg Blaney has a major role to play as well, I would suggest. Yeah, Greg Blaney is the man who's supposed to give leadership to the down attack. He's a very, very experienced player. Peter Whitnell at the moment seems to be uh, not getting the ball into his possession. He seems to be thinking of what he's going to do next before he's actually in possession. And Mick Lyons is, uh, is doing a very, very good job of him so far. Hayes and Burns competing in midfield. Likewise, Barry Breen. Breen against David Beggy. Takes a brown jinxie. But there's a foul and down have the free kick. The referee has moved it forward. Lyons and Foley going for it back there. And it's Mick Lyons who makes it his. James McCartan trying to put in a telling challenge. Reaches Jerry McEntee. He's fetching a lot of ball, Jerry McEntee. and will be the one who will uh, take the free. The referee wants it uh, moved back a few yards. Hayes competing with Burns. Beggy. Man free outside him on his right-hand side. One on his left as well as Gillick. Coyle. Steadying himself with a shot, but it falls short into the arms of Conor Deegan. Deegan out towards Greg Blaney, there against Liam Harnan, breaks down to Colm Coyle, Mead so good at waiting for the breaking ball and expecting it to come their way. O'Connell. Stafford. It's a Mead side working very, very hard for all their scores this afternoon. Under some pressure. It comes down off the post, back down to the secure hands of DJ Kane. Now John Kelly. of altitude. Arnon. Well, we have too much time to watch that one. It's going to be a free for down. Greg Blaney wants to take it quickly. Across towards Mickey Linden. Trying to get inside Terry Ferguson. It's with Whitnell. Lyon standing back from him, now putting in the challenge. It reaches James McCartan. And down lead by two points. Well, he's looked the liveliest so far of the inside forward line. He looks as though he could do an awful lot if he gets the right kind of ball. He's got his first point of the afternoon. Liam Harnan, who was injured last year and didn't play in last year's final against Cork, is down injured. He has had a long-standing back injury. He's done well indeed to uh, continue to compete at the highest level as he's been trying to shake off the effects of that back injury. Once again, the doctor, Jack Finn, is in and Burton, the physio, likewise. Well, you remember a little while ago the ball came down and he had an awful lot of time to look at it and uh, in the end fumbled. Yeah, here we see uh, Liam Harnan going back, uh, sorry, taking the ball, a heavy clash there, and uh, Liam seems to be up in the feet. Liam playing quite a good game today, I think it's his best game so far this year, he's settled down well, he's doing a very good job on Greg Blaney. Seemed to be Peter Whitnell who collided with it that from that time. Yeah, I think it was Peter Whitnell, but I think the, the down full forward line are very, very dangerous, and I feel that if the down half forward line could come and support these fellas quick once they get possession, that a lot of scores would come off them. So it's Down who lead in the All-Ireland Final by six points to four. A fine catch by Jerry McEntee. Up towards Brian Stafford, but uh, well over his shoulder. And in the end, it becomes a kick out for Down. Mead with three wide so far, Down with just one. And we've had 20 free kicks in all, Down with 11 of them.
Some holding by Liam Hayes on Eamon Burns. And once again for descent, the referee brings the ball forward 13 metres. It's taken by Ross Carr to Mickey Linden. Greg Blaney trying to come up in support. Carr likewise, it reaches Peter Whitnell. He gives it to Gary Mason under some pressure. In it goes, touchdown to Greg Blaney. High shot. Shoulder again by Greg Blaney, on Greg Blaney by uh, Kevin Foley. And it's going to be a free from 13 metres, right in front of the posts, and there should now be three points between the teams. Foley the one who committed the indiscretion. Mr. Joe, I think this is where, the, when the lead defence are on the other person, the full back line, they're trying to, to contest every ball, and this is where the down half hour line can come in and pick up crucial balls, like that one there with Greg Blaney picked it up. So Ross Carr will be kicking to make it seven points to four. This is the spell of the match which the down fans are thoroughly enjoying. Flags flying proudly up on Hill 16. There we see this ball here. The two uh, Mick Lyons and uh, Liam Harnley had to contest the ball and Greg Blaney gets a, a good breakdown. Again, high challenge by Kevin Foley. A few of these meat defenders, I think, will have to be careful because the referee will start booking them uh, sooner or later. A switch in defence, which we have to note. It's James McCartan now being marked by Kevin Foley and uh, Brendan Riley here challenging Gary Mason. He's his new opponent. Now Mickey Linden, who's got some great pace. Nice control as well. It's blocked down by Terry Fergus and a sideline ball to down. Out in the middle of the field, there's a down player down injured. And that looks like Ross Carr. Ross Carr or Barry Breen. Meanwhile, the ball is kicked in, and it's kicked wide. The referee had not noted that the uh, player was down injured in the centre of the field. As I was saying earlier on, Jerry CPJ Gillick now has come out the field around the centre of the field and leaving a little bit more room inside in the meat full forward line. And here you'll see the meat players trying to get the ball in quickly to Flynn and Stafford and create the openings in front of the goal. Ross is okay. PJ Gillick has also started to come much deeper in towards the centre forward role, and Tommy Dowd has switched into the corner. Here is Tommy Dowd, contesting possession here with John Kelly. Fouled by John Kelly and he collided with the sideline flag here as well. Could have been a nasty little injury that. Hopefully he's okay. Stafford to Gillick. Fine shoulder by John Kelly. Good shoulder to shoulder. The Down fans very pleased with that challenge because it has given them possession once more and Conor Deegan from Down Patrick ready to take the sideline ball. He was the centre half back for the Down team, victorious in the 87 All Ireland minor final against Cork. Mick Lyons sees it come back to Greg Blaney, pulled to ground. Lyons went stepping in quickly. Blaney will be anxious to take the free kick himself. Breen has gone up there in support but he was pushing and it's going to be a free out from Eve just about five and a half minutes to go to half time great roars of encouragement all around Croke Park for both teams down the leaders at the moment by seven points to four Jerry McEntee with a secure catch Runs kindly on for Brendan Riley. Stafford now. Taking a quick look up. Hunting it forward for Bernard Flynn, who comes across, made a good diagonal run. Brendan McKernan, his marker. And he's got by him, but he trips him, and it's a 13 metre free. Three having a quick word with him. So here's a chance to cut back the deficit for Brian Stafford. He's 
Hit it low. Collins. I'm sure he was going for a point that time. He's within two points of scoring 200 points in all in championship matches for me. And here's a high challenge by Liam Hayes on the notebook is out. The referee's patience was wearing a bit thin. And in the end, Hayes becomes the first one to have his name recorded by Seamus Breyer. Yeah, I think it's so, sooner or later Seamus Pryor was going to take a, a bit of action here. Here we see Brendan McKeon and getting the ball and Liam Hayes coming in very, very high. I, I didn't think Liam's tackle was actually as dirty as one of the sort of tackles beforehand, but uh, again, sooner or later the referee's going to have slapped, uh, slap his mark in this game and uh, this can't be allowed. John Kelly there wasn't too happy with uh, something that uh, Bernard Flynn just did. Kicking deep. Fine fetch in there. And it's Jerry McEntee again. Playing his heart out for me. Trying to make up for the loss of Colm O'Rourke. And he wins another 13-metre advantage at USP 10. Stafford now. Inside towards PJ Gillick. Stafford with his left foot. And Neil Collins watched it. Jerry McEntee touches it down, but there's a mead man there, or a down man waiting for it, that's Conor Deegan. Whitnell chasing with Big Lions. James McCartan trying to put in a challenge. And in the end, the referee has given Mead the free out. We'll judge by his demeanour that he's not too pleased. Still very displeased with that decision, feeling that the ball was picked off the ground, I think. Brendan Riley, meanwhile. Liam Hayes reaching up, happy to see PJ Gillick, who was uh, programmed at midfield, but because of Colm O'Rourke's absence, has played elsewhere. Looking to take that one. Riley once more. Many, many frees now in this match. A total of 31 so far. And we're just inside two minutes to go to half time. Conor Deegan, Coyle. Nice control play by the down man. Burns, belting it forward. Comes off the chest of Kevin Foley. Greg Glaney going forward with purpose. McCartan has a player outside him if he wants to give it to him. That was Ross Carr. And the referee has whistled and it's a free to down. Ross Carr got the ball, hit it in. But in any case, it's going to be a free. James McCartan he, he gets the ball, he seems to put the, a lot of panic into the into the meat defence, but there I think a frontal charge okay by Liam Harmon into the chest of James McCartan as he was going through. Sean Boylan and uh, Colm O'Rourke. You wonder when they'll decide to introduce Colm. Ross Carr trying to put four points between the teams. With his third point of the afternoon. Down leading by double scores. And the bookmakers all around the country who made them rank outsiders must be uh, having the odd little touch of panic at this stage. Well, Bart Simpson is here in any case. Down fans and down players and mentors will be well aware that Meath have uh, made the late recovery now into an art form. I think here you'll see the referee is going to go back and talk to Brendan McKiernan because uh, since he got the last tackle, heavy tackle on him, he seems to be taking it out of Bernard Flynn. Which is quite noticeable there, but that uh, down ball walked up the field. They're using the ball much better out of their defence. Eamon Burns is coming back and bringing the ball forward. And he, uh, good ball into their forward, a good low ball into the forward to good advantage. So many of these scores so far, the 12 points have come from freeze down with uh, two points from play, Mead with one point from play. McEntee 
once again winning possession and winning the free kick. Stopped by Paddy O'Rourke, doing a good job on Colm Coyle. Coyle commits the foul. Play fractured repeatedly. A minute into injury time. Greg Laney. Up for Peter Whitnell. Looking for his first score of the day. Fumbles, however, and McLions comes in with the chance to make the challenge. Still Whitnell. And to burst his way through. Stopped by Terry Ferguson. His father is Stitchy, of course, who played with Dublin, but was actually born in County Down. That's another free in for Down. The foul by Jerry McIntyre. So Ross Carr, who's looked very positive and assured in his shooting so far. Mick Lyons limping as a result of uh, a challenge just a moment ago, and of course he was in the wars with injury earlier in the match back to Mard to uh, mind the goal mouth so nearly two minutes of injury time played and Ross Carr has the chance to put five points between the teams would that be the moment when me on the bench at least would begin to panic it drops short and it's dropped wide Very near to half time. Indeed, the referee signals to Mickey McQuillan that that's it for the opening 35, indeed 37 minutes. It was anything but a flowing game of football in the opening half. Meade took the early lead as expected, but Down have come back and made a fine recovery. And who would have expected at that half time, Down would lead by four points. Half time scored, Down eight points, Meade four. La Hound Sistigas Claude and scored a fogit, Grev Gai Riga Hanna Wallish and Doon, Agus Dina Raw, Grev Anna Hansk, Rai Trev and Heron Gri Kujola than Gedu Ron Vinadiga Shatska Hoffman. Achtad no Vilok Lantern and me at Nu, Good Duke of Column or Rudka. Hans has the right leg, right knee, encased in strapping their support because he uh, took a heavy knock in the first half and was limping very noticeably as he made his way off at half time. And indeed there were questions about uh, whether he would be back out for the second half. He's still marking Peter Whitnell as Seamus Pryor prepares to restart. Noting the half forwards and half backs inside the 45 metre line. So the second half gets underway. Barry Breen trying to give the forward line the kind of possession which they can turn into scores. Peter Whitnell. Now to the very dangerous James McCartan. Tackled by Mick Lyons, and the referee says, back you go, that's a free in for down. Well, Jack, at half-time, we were speculating that uh, Mick Lyons might not be out for the second half. Yes, Johnny, he limped very heavily into the dressing room at half-time, and it's good to see Mick back out, because he'd been playing quite well up to that. He'd uh, helped Peter Whitney quite well. And I see that Kevin Foley has now switched back on James McCartan, and uh, Brendan Royal is brought up in the half-hour line to mark Gary Mason. It's Ross Carr, having missed, I think, just one free in the first half, having kicked three, and he's missed another. Well, it won't have done his confidence much good, much good. So it remains down eight points, Meath four. kick out by Mickey McQuillan towards Jerry McEntee having a very fine match indeed up towards PJ Gillick who started once again at right corner forward Liam Haid prods it inside towards Bernard Flynn David Beggy calling for it on his left hand side but Flynn has the confidence and composure to kick and strike over the first point of the second half and cut back the deficit now to just three points that's two points now for Bernard Flynn Sides were level on three occasions in the first half, but then down edged in front before half time. That's Tommy Dowd with the fetch there against John Kelly. 
And David Beggy, I think, uh, absolutely furious with John Kelly for the persistent fouling as he saw it there on Tommy Dowd. And it's very rarely that you see David Beggy get in trouble with the referee, but I think a little bit of frustration and annoyance just crept into his, uh, his composure that time. see uh, Tommy Dow with the ball on the ground and uh, John Kelly said when David Beggy furious there and uh, here I think we're going to have David Beggy booked uh, for a trivial thing and Kelly is booked as well and you know you see some incidents getting away in the first half very high tackles and you see what logic is in this but uh, I think the referee has to stamp his authority in this game and uh, for us to have a very good second half it's quite noticeable there that the two balls that came into midfield in the second half the meet of one them both and uh, you might see this might be the start of their uh, known comeback that we've seen all the year Hayes fires it inside and it's back out by Conor Deegan. First time back out into the middle. Martin O'Connor down to Greg Blaney. Down motoring well. Barry Breen now, a quick look up on the left boot. Coming down from the clouds towards Peter Whitnell and Mickey Linden. Linden gets there first. There's plenty of support play. Ross Carr there, Barry Breen there as well. And James McCartan. Little chip shot by McCartan and it's up and it's over the bar point of the day but he's proving a real handful for anybody who's had to mark him so far I think he scored two points in last year's league final as well and then it was Kevin Foley who had the task of subduing him on that occasion yeah we were saying earlier on the first half how influential Greg Blaney could be but he won that ball in midfield and brought it forward uh, here we see James McCartan getting the ball taking on the meat defence and I've seen it all John when I've seen James McCartan kicking the point with his left foot <laughs> Green. Now DJ Kane, his brother, older brother Val Kane, of course, was part of the down set up in the 60s. James McCartan again, and it's Eamon Burns on to Ross Carr. A quick lip up once more, half blocked down by Martin O'Connell, it seems, runs on, however. And the support here for the backs comes from David Beggy. John Kelly fumbling. Beggy going in, making the challenge. Paddy O'Rourke here. Sherry McEntee secure in his holding. Hayes now. That'll give Brian Stafford quite a bit of work to do to try and keep that one in play. Meter looking a very frustrated team at the moment. They seem to be looking for inspiration and uh, I'm sure it might be too long if Colomaro is fit to come on that we'll see him warming up the side Whitnell touched it down, it comes to Liam Harnan, and now Colum Coyle. Bernard Flynn has moved in towards the centre of the attack, and uh, it's Brian Stafford who's begun to roam a bit. Now John Kelly, down, keeping their balance and composure in defence, a good man-to-man -man markup. All this while Peter Whitnell is down injured. James McCarthy again coming across off of his right-hand side. Ross Carr. Carr kicking with the left, and it's gone in. It's a silver point by Ross Carr. Never bent either right or left. Was absolutely dead straight, and how about that? A five-point difference. Down for the second time in the game, leading by double scores. And across on the far side, Colm O'Rourke is getting ready. Whitnell in need of attention from Dr. John Gribben. But that's a sight which will delight me on the one hand, but on the other hand, they realised that they were only going to be bringing him in if there was a real, ne real need to do so. Whitnell is fit to take up his place. Mead in trouble once more, as they've been on a few times in this championship. But teams like Dublin and Wicklow and Roscommon remember that you have to put away a high percentage of your chances if you hope to beat this Meath team. But right now they're in trouble, behind by five points. Blaney. Taking the free to James McCartan. An exciting player in full flight. Flynn trying to go back and put in a challenge. It's with Mickey Linden. Linden yet to score in this game. Now's his chance. He's put it over. There's a big 
sign outside a pub which is owned by Mickey Linden's mother and aunties which says, Mickey, bring back the Sam Maguire. They're doing the business so far. And Colm O'Rourke is coming in as we watch the reprieve. A very good score for down here. Again, just very clearly, they won the ball out the field for there. who got it through to James McCartan. Gave the ball out here to Mickey Linden. And here he shows tremendous pace to get around the two defenders and then kicks a great point with his left foot. As I say, down and buzzing at the moment, and uh, I see Colm O'Rourke in, so me to look, have the inspiration on the field now if they can lift it. Colm Coyle is the one who's gone. Colm O'Rourke is in. He's taking up station at the top of the right, his selected position. PJ Gillick will now operate, I'm sure, in and around the 40. Marking uh, Paddy O'Rourke, fouling Paddy O'Rourke. So Meath have had to bring in Colm O'Rourke. Eight minutes into the second half. They started the half well, kicked the first point, but now down have come back and have kicked three points of their own. Paul Higgins from Bally Martin. Towards James McCarthy. Runs on towards Whitnell. Brendan Riley tries to get back goal side. Comes back again to James McCarthy. Challenged by Brendan Riley and Kevin Foley. Fell inside to Greg Blaney. Mickey Linden has got the opportunity and Barry Green has got a goal! Barry Green has got a goal! The midfielder has come deep and the down fans in Croke Park absolutely erupting into a cauldron of noise. It's a sea of red and black. Hill 16 raising the decibel level. Nearly nine minutes gone in the second half, Jack. Yeah, we were saying before the game how confident and cocky these down players are. Peter Whitner winning the ball, giving it to James McCartan again, who's causing an awful lot of problems. But here we see Greg Blaney again, the experienced runner, gives a great ball to Mickey Linden, unselfishly gives the ball across the square, and there you have Barry Breen knocking in. A great goal for, me, for down, and now it's going to take a, a, an exceptional effort for me to come back and win this match if they can. He was just on the edge of the small square when that ball was coming across to him. The positioning is interesting. Yes, I see Mickey Lennon here get the ball across, yes, just outside the square, how he jumped in and the ball was played. He certainly jumped inside, whatever about starting outside. Shades of a goal there, I seem to recall something similar happening in the 86 final. The ball's gone wide. Sean Boylan now having a mountain of a task. Eamon Burns for a downside, seeking to bring back the Sam Maguire for the first time in 23 years. Winners in 60, 61 and 68. They've never lost a final. Now Colm O'Rourke. He looks fit the way he's uh, able to hand out those shoulders. David Beggy couldn't hold on to it. DJ Kane trying to lift the seeds for down. Paul Higgins. This is a great spell in the game, which certainly the down fans are enjoying enormously. There were so many down people outside Crow Park today. We were speculating earlier that they couldn't all have tickets. But wherever they're watching it, they're certainly enjoying it, I'm sure. They've got themselves a free kick. Nothing is going right for me at the moment, but I think it's quite clear throughout the game the pressure.